I'm gonna show you how to get the best green screen results using the Skyglass app. So right now, obviously it looks terrible. So I'm gonna show you how to dial in the settings. The first thing you wanna do is tap on the little camera icon on the right. Then the first icon there that has that little person, if you were to tap on that, that puts you right into our AI background removal mode. And you can see that the whole entire scene has just turned into the 3D scene and it's just using AI to cut her out. But obviously you can see up around her hair, it's glitching and there's a lot of artifacts. So it doesn't give you the best results. So we really wanna use a green screen. So tap on that little person icon on the left again to turn the green screen mode back on. And now here it's saying, tap your green screen. And really what you wanna do is tap in the most evenly lit area of the green screen. So instead of tapping on the shadow behind here, that'll give you pretty poor results. Try to tap a large evenly lit surface. I'm just gonna go up in the top kind of left here. And there we go. Already the results are looking much cleaner and much, much better. But let's see if we can dial them in even more. So one of the first things that I want to do with this is actually make sure that my white balance is set properly because that can affect the green screen. So in the advanced settings here, next to the light bulb, this is your white balance. And so if I tap on that, it'll put it right into auto white balance and that might be okay, but you don't want it to change throughout your filming. So make sure you want to tap on that again, that'll put it in a locked off mode. You know, if you have it set correct, you won't need to adjust it again. But if you need to adjust it, tap those three little dots and then tap the temperature icon. And here's where you can go ahead and manually set it. So I know that the light that I'm using is set to 3200 Kelvin and that is what I want to set it to, which it's very close already using that auto mode, but I'm going to set it exactly to 3200 Kelvin and then just tap out of there. I'm also going to tap on this little droplet icon and this will allow me to change the tint. So the green and magenta tint. So obviously if you mess with this, it's really going to mess with your key and how your subject looks. So I'm just going to keep mine set to zero and I'll tap above to get out of there and then tap above to get out of there. Now the white balance is locked. That shouldn't change throughout the course of filming. And another thing I want to check on is my exposure, which is this plus and minus icon. This is auto exposure, but I want to make sure it's locked so it doesn't change how the green screen is keying. So I'll tap on it and you'll see it says exposure locked. That's really key to make sure that you get a good keying result so that when people are moving about in the scene or lights are kind of changing, that everything doesn't change and key out differently if your exposure changes. So that's definitely something you also want locked. Now, one other thing we're going to quickly look at here is this last little icon. This is our kind of color filter. And so this is the default color filter. But what I like to do to get the best results is go tap these little lines here. And this is the black point. So you can make it much darker and more rich to match the background or lighter. But I like to keep mine on average between about 10 to 20. And for this, I'm going to do about 0.15. And that's good. So already these results look pretty good, but I wanna show you how you can dial them in even more. So we're gonna tap on that little camera icon again, and then tap the three dots next to the person, and this is where we get into all of the green screen keying features. So like I already showed you, you can tap on the eyedropper, and this will let you choose your green screen or blue screen, doesn't matter. But if you wanna make fine tune adjustments to it, you wanna tap on this little checker icon. And this is where you have our threshold and feather controls. So controlling the threshold is this main slider down here at the bottom. And as I slide to the left, less of the image is cut out. And as I slide to the right, more and more cuts out. And you see how it starts to eat into our subject until they're completely gone. So you really wanna dial this in just right. So I'm gonna get in a little closer so we can see. And if you're having a line, an outline around your subject, you want to just kind of dial this in until that outline around their clothing or their hair disappears. So right about here is where it starts to look really good for me and you're not seeing an edge around them. But you want to be careful because if you go in too far, it'll start to make things go transparent. Like you can see her hair getting a little bit too transparent around the edges. So you want to dial this in just right. And that looks pretty good right there. Now what you want to do is with these little markers on the top, these two markers, you can actually slide them together, closer together or further apart. And this is the edge feathering. So the closer together they are, the sharper the edges are. So see around her hair where it's kind of glitching and that's because it's doing a really sharp key. So we want to smooth that out and feather it so that it doesn't look so sharp and harsh of an edge. 
And I usually like to have mine right about there. That tends to give me the best results, kind of a nice feathering off to the background. But you could go even further with it, but again, you wanna be careful because things start to get transparent. You can see now her hair and even her body starting to get transparent. So you really don't want the feather to go out that far and you really don't want it to be completely close together. Now, the final thing I'm gonna show you is on the far right here, and this is our little de-spill icon. And so when you turn that off, you'll see that it looks like some paint is spilling out. That puts green back onto the skin tones and your subject. And really by default, you wanna keep that on at all times because then it takes away some of the green and the skin tones. It may be more noticeable on certain clothing or skin tones, but yeah, I really like to keep that on because it just kind of works its magic in the background to get rid of any of that green spill. This is how you get nice results using a green screen. And something I do want to point out is that we're actually lighting this whole thing with just one light. So I'm going to go into this mode so you can see. So see this big shadow behind her. And that's because we're using directional lighting. So we've got the light right here and it's just pointed straight down at her and creating this big shadow. And that could be a problem for you. So really, if you have multiple lights, that would be best. You could use this as your key light pointed at her like this, but you want to light up the background separately if you can. So if you don't have two lights, what you can do is actually you can take your light and you can point it directly at the ceiling, especially if you have white ceilings. This works really well. This is something that I really like to do is just bounce it right off the ceiling because then it turns into one giant white soft box. And now it's illuminating a lot of the green screen and that shadow is a little bit less harsh. It's still definitely there. So what I might do is actually move this more directly in front of her so that when we are standing in front of her, the shadows directly behind her instead of at an angle. So that's a little bit better. And really what you would want to do is add a second light to light up her face and everything a little bit more. But this is a good way to get a nice even lighting. So I'll go ahead and tap on that. And you can see the results here look a little bit more soft and not as harsh of shadows on her face. So yeah, this is how you get really nice, good, clean results when you're lighting the green screen. I'm gonna get in nice and close here so you can see those edges and See there, it's a little bit transparent. I can see the little bit of transparency. So I'll just go ahead and dial that back a tiny bit. There we go. Now it's not eating into her hair as much. So yeah, you want to fine tune that. And as you play with the lighting, you'll probably want to go and change some of those settings again, but that's the best way to get good quality results with a green screen using the Sky Glass app.